Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another episode of my board game collection, Shelf by Shelf. And today I'll be covering my fourth shelf, the shelf that I've deemed or have classified as shelf number four. So, let us see what we have here. Down in the depths. Sorry for the darkness here. We're in the dungeon. So these are the games in my shelf number four. First of all, we have from left to right, we have Race for the Galaxy. And this is one of my absolute favorite games. This is a card game that can be played from two to four players. However, I prefer to play this two players as a tactical experience. And this game combines elements of games like Puerto Rico and um, San Juan, which is the card game implementation of Puerto Rico, where you have variable phase orders and players are choosing different actions. However, in this game, each player is choosing an action on each turn and it's simultaneous and it's secret until revealed. So there's a lot of anticipating and speculating what your opponent's actions might be. Players are trying to build their intergalactic empire comprised of different uh, planet cards, different developments and technology cards. And all of these cards not only give you victory points at the end of the game, but they also give you special in-game abilities. The uh, possibility of drawing more cards, the possibility of you know spending less to settle planets, and so on and so forth. Also, um, these cards in this game, this is a multi-use card game where the cards can be used for multiple things. First of all, they can be placed on your tableau as part of your intergalactic empire. They also can be used as money. Each card is worth the same amount of money, just one. They could be discarded in order to pay for developments and planets that need to be settled. And finally, they could also be placed underneath uh, production worlds, worlds or planets of yours that produce goods, you would place a random card underneath it face down and that face down card indicates or represents the fact that that planet has produced a good or a resource that can later be used or traded in for points or maybe even additional cards. So I love the idea of the multi-use card game. I love the idea of the variable phase order, the simultaneous play. Uh, this game, the first expansion, The Gathering Storm, adds a really cool uh, solo module, which I enjoy immensely. Fun game, a little bit hard to teach. Yes, the symbology, the iconography is a little bit of a beast and a bear to teach to other people. But once people get to play it enough times, I feel that it's starts to kind of become second nature. So that's Race for the Galaxy. Then we have Takaido. This is a nice, cool, zen-like game. Japanese uh, theme. Players are on the on the road of Takaido to Ido. And basically, they're stopping by different spots. They're acquiring different goods. They're eating food. They're donating to the temples. They're having encounters with different personalities that benefit them in some way or another. Um, you've got these um, additional cards uh these panorama cards that also give you little points it's a little bit of point salad and it's very similar to it's like movement um movement point by point movement you're moving to one spot but once you move to a spot you can't move back uh, and, and player whoever's behind whoever the the player who's furthest behind is always the current player so if players jump too far ahead you know the other players can really just pick apart and get to all those other spots and benefit from them but at the same time, there's like five little pit stops along the way, the inns where you go and dine and get some amazing uh, culinary um, delights. But in the meantime, they hold you back from keeping on from jumping too, too back, too forward while other players try to catch up. It's really cool. It's really light. I will say that it's gateway. But for some reason, the presentation and just um the collection the set collection in this game really intrigues me and i keep on going back to it then we have here flick em up wild west flicking dexterity game this game is fun i do need to get it to the table more um it's a scenario based game i think the base game alone comes with eight or ten scenarios and the different scenarios have different winning conditions but players this is a team versus team game no matter how many uh Players are in the team. There's five different cowboys to control for both sides. The good guys, the lawmen, and the renegades or the outlaws. And you're just going to be flicking your pieces uh, across the town. And you're going to be flicking little bullet-shaped pieces to try to aim for uh, your opponent's 
player pieces and try to knock them out. And every different uh, scenario has a different end game condition. All right, then we have Deadwood, another Wild West themed game, but this is a worker placement game where players are, you know, expanding and building the city of Deadwood collectively by adding more buildings to it, by building the train station and the and the railroad tracks. And along the way, players are engaging in duels whenever two players uh, workers meet in the same building that will trigger a duel and there'll be a rolling of dice and some some of the workers are more powerful than others therefore they will roll more dice if there's a duel so you got to utilize that wisely also you only have a certain supply of workers in your ranch and you want to make decisions going forward to add those workers to your ranch really cool your workers do die in this game they don't just go back to your supply they go they die and they're buried in, in foothill and that can be very, very frustrating. So, and triggering um, battles, while it can give you lots of benefits, also gives you wanted posters, which are negative points at the end of the game. Unless you go to the church building, where for whatever reason they forgive you of your crimes, and you get to uh, get rid of some of those wanted posters. And then finally, we have The Pursuit of Happiness. Amazing worker placement game. Life, the game of life for board gamers. This game is really, really cool. Uh, theoretically it plays for eight rounds but more often than not you're gonna die by round number six maybe round number seven if you play your cards right and live a healthy life right but it's so cool because you get to role play you get to make decisions that perhaps you wouldn't make in your real life uh, the worker placement is neat the way you manage time and stress and happiness in this game is cool all the other different resources that you're managing like influence like book knowledge like creativity these are all really cool things money you're making money you have a career you get into relationships if you want to perhaps you even take the relationship all the way and get married and have children so neat the different projects you can take part of the different possessions you can acquire the different activities you can engage in all so much fun love the pursuit of happiness and that's it those are my games in shelf number four as you can see i had a lot to say about that shelf because i really like shelf number four some of my favorite games of all time are right there on shelf number four so that's it for today's episode of my board game collection shelf by shelf I'm Harry. Thank you so much for joining. Comment down below. What do you think about these games? Do you own them? Which ones are you interested in or curious about? Which ones do you think I'm stupid for still having in my collection? All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. This is Harry from When Harry Met Board Games saying stay safe, everybody. Stay healthy and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.